testing one, two, three. Alright gang, you guys ready to get started? Yeah. Alright. 2.30 on the dot, sweet. Um, thank you for coming today. Um, this is my first time giving this presentation, so uh, I'll work my way through it the best that I can. I'm going to try to run two monitors at the same time. I got my notes on this one. Um, so if, if I'm talking about something that looks completely off, let me know. I may have forgotten to change this one up here. Also, I've got this earpiece in just because that picks up my sound for our video. Um, so I'm not listening to so that does get me amped up for uh, nutrition talks. Who here has done a uh, challenge before with four barrels? Okay, about half. Who has already started to clean some things up um, starting in the new year? Okay, most of us. after today, uh, it'll all look a little bit easier. All right. So, uh, one of the things I want to really get across to you guys today is why healthy eating should always be a top priority in your life. So, it's beyond just fueling your goals here at the gym. Uh, it's beyond just doing a challenge and, and seeing some temporary gains. Um, you know, I'm going to be pushing you guys to make some behavioral shifts uh, which I think is going to be the most important thing, some found foundational things um, that you can do on you know, a weekly basis, things that you, you integrate into your lifestyle um, that will set you up for long-term nutritional success. But the only way that you guys are going to stick with that is if you really understand the why behind why we're eating the way that, that we're recommending that you guys eat throughout this challenge. So, up there on the slide, food is the most powerful contributor to your health and performance. Uh, a lot of times people get into an exercise program and they think, you know, showing up to work out, that's the most important thing. It's important, but it's really about one third of the equation. You know, nutrition uh, is even more foundational than the exercise piece. And then the other piece that we're gonna talk about today that's very important as well is uh, sleep. So, really, I don't think any real benefits or your benefits won't be actualized on your health journey unless you can kind of integrate all three of those, sleep, nutrition, and exercise. All right, so um, what does food influence? Food influences your recovery, your general mood and feeling, energy levels, mental acuity, body composition, your muscle growth and fat loss, bone density, your complexion even, your disease risk. Um, that's long-term preventable and communicable. So um, I think uh, COVID kind of showed that to us as well, that the better we eat, the better health situation that we're in, that can even protect us against an acute illness uh, like that. And then your health span and longevity. We've thrown out that health span term a few times in health bulletins. Does everybody here know what that, what that health span means? Does anybody not know what health span means? Okay, so it's basically the years in your life that you're still active and mobile. You know, it's great to push our life expectancy up to 80 or 90, but if we're in a nursing home for the last 10 years, or if we're immobile uh, for the last 10 years of our life, our quality of life usually isn't that great. So the thing that we try to focus on is not necessarily just longevity, it's the health span piece as well. Goals of our challenge. 
I want to break the vicious cycle. So over the next few slides, I think this will start to make a little bit more sense, but when you're not eating well, it's harder to make that turn. Uh, it's harder to make that next meal the food that you should be having. So during this challenge, I hope we can give you the motivation to make that turn. And um, just to give you guys a little insight into like how hard it is to make that turn, if you're eating a lot of simple processed carbohydrates, that's gonna influence the makeup of the microorganisms that are within your gut. And that's also gonna make up a lot of what drives your hunger cues. So you know, there's that, there's that saying, you are what you eat. Um, there's a lot of truth to the, the food that you put in your body also sets up this environment that causes you to crave more of that food. So when you make that initial shift, it's gonna be a little bit harder to kind of reset your gut biome, get your body back to humming like it should be. Uh, which is my next bullet, uh, but if you can make that turn, the, the continual process actually becomes a little bit easier. Uh, get your body humming. So I think a lot of times when people do a nutrition challenge, they do it because they want uh, a body composition goal or a weight loss goal or a performance goal. Um, we'll talk about body composition a bit, but uh, I wanna focus more on something uh, or things like your metabolic health. So what are some deeper underlying markers of fitness that you can focus on. Uh, ingraining new behaviors. So we could sit here, I could just give you a written out uh, meal plan of here's exactly what I want you guys to eat this week. Some of you would like it, some of you wouldn't, some of you would stick to it, some of you wouldn't. Um, the big thing that's going to make the, the, the most impact on your nutrition long term is can you make some small shifts in your behaviors still fitting your everyday lifestyle. So, you know, we don't expect you guys to weigh and measure every meal for the next six weeks. That'd probably be um, a little bit tough uh, for most of us. But we can do some of these big checklist items that are gonna set you up for success uh, that really aren't, hopefully aren't too much of a departure uh, from what you're already doing. We talked a little bit about resetting your gut biome. Uh, we wanna promote metabolic health. We'll dive into that a little bit more in the next slide. Uh, improve your brain chemistry as well. A couple slides forward. Uh, we'll dive into that one deeper. We'll dive into why body composition is important. Um, another thing I want you guys to understand from this challenge is that eating healthier is not harder, it's just different. You have to make that shift, you have to start ingraining some new behaviors, but once you've learned the process, um, it just becomes, it, it's no different than what you're doing now. Uh, you might be dedicating a little bit more time to, to prep or something each week. Um, but it's, it's really not that, that much harder. And then hopefully I can help demystify uh, some food and uh, the reasons why you should be making uh, some of these nutritional choices. All right, metabolic health and LBM, which is lean body mass. So if we look at what are those underlying markers of health that says, our disease risk is low, our inflammation is low, our ability to recover um, is where it needs to be, and metabolic health is a, is a good place to look. Um, there was a study that came out earlier this year, we talked about it in one of the health bulletins as well, but only 12% of Americans are metabolically healthy. So even people that you look at on the street a lot that you might think, oh, that person's in great shape, um, they're skinny, whatever it may be, um, they may not even be metabolically healthy. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the food, or most of that has to do with the food choices you make, whether or not you're getting adequate exercise, and if you're getting enough sleep. Um, so, lots of details on this slide. I put those in there intentionally because I'm going to send these slides to you after um, today's presentation, and that way you can reference some of those numbers if you need to. Because I know if you told me, hey, give me the stats right now for metabolic health, I couldn't do it just off the top of my head. And it actually took me a long time to even start to understand what metabolic health meant. Uh, but some of the markers that are up there, um, optimal waist circumference. We're not going to look at waist circumference in this challenge, but we are looking at what's our lean tissue number and what's our body fat number. Um, what's your fasting glucose? So anytime you get blood work done, you're going to get that number back. Uh, your triglycerides, your cholesterol, and are you taking medication or not? So, if you're getting yearly checkups, you're most likely, or bi-annual checkups, you're most likely um, getting all of these numbers um, in that blood work. But um, 
going back to nutritional nutrition influencing your long-term health uh, there's ways that you can change your body mass there's ways that you can put on muscle that you can get skinny that don't necessarily support metabolic health but the approach that we take we want that to kind of be the first thing that comes that's what gets your body humming that means that everything's in stasis and then the weight loss piece the performance piece the feeling better piece comes along a lot easier lean body mass uh, so that's the total weight of your body uh, minus your fat mass. So that includes your organ, uh, your organs, your skin, uh, your bones, body water, and muscle mass. Why is that important? So uh, more lean body mass incre increases your base metabolic rate. So essentially the more lean mass you have, the more calories you burn in a day, once you get a good level of lean mass on you, it's easier to uh, keep kind of an ideal mass in an ideal um, body fat percentage. It supports the immune system and helps the body recover from serious illness. So the more lean body mass you have, uh, the quicker the immune system kicks in, the more resources it has to use. Uh, higher muscle mass is also associated with higher bone density, which becomes more and more important uh, the older we get. Uh, it also protects against insulin sensitivity, um, which swings in glucose uh, here are looking to be, whether you're diabetic or not, um, are looking like those are some of the biggest indicators on that health span. So if you see a lot of swings in your blood glucose throughout the day, there's just a lot of long-term issues that can come along with that. And then greater lean body mass in earlier decades of your life correlates to greater lean body mass in later decades of your life. So there are uh, outliers here. You know, you could be the bodybuilder who maybe has too much lean body mass Maybe you're super strong and you squat 600 pounds, but I'm sure there's a, a physical toll that that's going to play on your body over time as well. So, um, you know, there, there are extremes when it comes to talking about uh, lean body mass, but for most of us in here, our goal should be to constantly be trying to push that lean body mass number up, or at least keep it up, especially as we get into later decades of life. All right, so this is the fitness uh, and wellness continuum. And, and what we try to get across here is that um, being healthy and being fit are measurements of the same thing. Being fit is just farther along that continuum. So a lot of times when we go and we get that blood work done and we say, oh, I'm within the healthy range, that's good enough. Well, if you continue to eat better, if you continue to improve your fitness, those uh, measures of metabolic health should continue to go up as well. The farther we can push ourselves towards the fitness end, the longer it's gonna take us to slide back that continuum as we age. So that's the other thing I wanna get across to you guys. That's why we're always pushing for new performance markers in the gym as well. Uh, that's a measure of your fitness. How much can you lift? Obviously there's a point of diminishing returns, but the longer that we can deadlift our body weight, the longer that we can squat our body weight, the longer that we're going to maintain that strength uh, into our lifetime. Now, the last thing I want to point out about the lean body mass piece is that's convenient because, or the fact that lean body mass can be associated with long-term health is convenient because it is the thing that most of us seek when we're looking for some short-term short -term gains uh, in our fitness or in our appearance. You know, I'm sure we would all like to maybe lose a few pounds of fat, we would all like to probably feel better, we would all like to have a little bit more lean muscle. Those are the things that most people seek now, whether or not they want to admit it or not. I mean, obviously health is a big part of that, um, but those are also the things that are going to influence your health down the road as well. Okay, important factors to understand in optimizing your nutrition. First one is, it takes 10 years to master your nutrition. So you're not gonna learn everything that you need in this challenge. You're not gonna ingrain all the behaviors that you need in this challenge. But it's the process of coming back to it over and over again, and you keep putting new things in your toolbox. You keep finding things that work, things that don't work. And the more you come back to it, the more positive behaviors you'll pick up, uh, and the better your eating will get. So just know that this is a process that takes a long time. Nutrition should truly be a practice for you meaning that I really like that word practice because it's something that you come back to on a consistent basis, maybe with no specific end goal, 
just for the fact that I'm trying to get better at this thing. Everybody ebbs and flows. Nutrition coaches, dietitians, everybody. Um, nutrition is better at some points of the year and, and not as good at other points of the year. So don't beat yourself up um, when it comes to how well you kick off this challenge. You know, your goal shouldn't be to be perfect on week one and then uh, maybe I slip up a little bit on week four, week five. It should be pretty good on week one, a little better on week two, better on week three. I want you guys to get better at this stuff the deeper we get into the challenge. Different strokes for different folks. Um, nutrition uh, and what works, um, maybe not in kind, so maybe not the things that you're putting in your body to a degree, uh, but the methods uh, are gonna differ for everybody. So some people, they like the spreadsheet approach. They like to see, this is exactly what I need to put in my body at every meal. Let's plan it all out, let's go from there. Other people like more of the eyeball approach. Uh, we're gonna talk about the hand method in a little bit, um, which is kind of, I think, a good midpoint uh, for how to balance your meals and how to get some semblance of uh, macronutrient and caloric balance. Create a lifestyle and environment that promotes healthy eating. Um, so that's that piece of, you can't just come into the challenge and follow the rules that we're gonna give you for the next um, six weeks. Uh, the biggest things that I want you, actually probably the biggest thing out of all today is I want you guys to get better at cooking. That would be like the overarching theme of this challenge. And we'll talk about that more here in a second. So, you know, how do you put yourself in an environment like this where you're around people who talk about eating healthy? How do you uh, promote eating healthy throughout your household? Uh, has anyone here ever done a nutrition challenge or even tried to get on a diet when no one else in your house did it? Yeah, I mean, I'm in that boat. It's about 10 times harder because probably the biggest determinant of whether, you're not, you know, whether or not you're gonna eat junk food is if it's in your house. Um, so you've gotta create that environment. You've gotta make cooking something that, you know, hopefully your family enjoys to do, or hopefully that you at least are looking for ways to get better at that so it becomes part of your practice. It will take some work and some discipline, so we always have a few people at the beginning of challenge who, challenges who say, oh my gosh, like, I didn't know I was gonna have to read all the stuff that you sent me in the email. Um, I didn't know that I wasn't gonna be able to eat this, this, and this. Uh, you know, we tried to make the, the list uh, pretty inclusive this time, um, but there are probably gonna be some things that you're gonna have to cut out. I've got a list at the end of some stuff that I'll definitely be cutting out uh, throughout the course of the challenge. So be ready to have a little discipline uh, over the next six weeks. And then we've already talked about habit change. Okay, important habits, there's that cooking piece. Make cooking a practice. So if you guys pick up anything from the challenge, hopefully you'll pick up the habit of prepping food um, sometime during the week. And the more you prep food, the better you get at cooking, and hopefully the better and the more it becomes uh, part of your lifestyle. Making balanced grocery lists. So this is probably where I've gotten the most trouble over the last few months is I haven't made a grocery list almost any time I went to the grocery. I come back with some of the stuff I need, some of the stuff I don't, and then I come back with some stuff that I probably shouldn't have brought back at all. Um, you know, putting that effort of doing a five minute grocery list, using that three per grocery list, and I'm sure some of you have seen before, uh, is a really handy way to make sure that you're buying the right stuff and not buying the stuff uh, that you shouldn't buy. Plus, it's not a huge deviation in behavior. It's five minutes of your week. One to two hours of weekly prepping. So this might be the biggest deviation in effort that we're asking for, um, but this is probably the number one thing that's gonna set you up for success. Uh, sometimes I get people who tell me, well, you know what, like, I got a lot of time, like my family, we just cook meals uh, you know, that day or day of. I guarantee you at some point of the week, things get crunched and you end up reaching for something that if you would have had better options in your refrigerator, you would have went for those options, or you ate out when you could have eaten something healthy at home. Take a water bottle everywhere you go. Uh, I see a lot of water bottles sitting around here, so good job there. Uh, that'll make sure that you're getting enough hydration. Also, it's, it's this thing, uh, you know, it's your, it should start acting like your phone or, or your heat. It should just be with you. Uh, it's part of your life. The more that water bottle's there, the more water you're going to drink. Look for red flags. Um, so there's some big red flags.